contracts. English law is based more on case law than in many other European countries, which are more orientated towards Roman law. Case law is applied by basing decisions on past cases that have been decided upon in the courts. These past cases have thus set a precedence. Having the UK's legal system based on case law means that there are certain cases that set precedence and thus dictate the law in the particular area concerned. At this point, we can say that every country has a different legal system. This of course means that because the specifics of this lesson mainly deal with the United Kingdom's legal system, then this will most likely mean that this lesson will have little specific relevance to you if you operate in another country. However, commonalities will always exist. Thus, you will still garner insight from this section. A business agreement and the key elements required for the formation of a valid contract. A contract is an agreement which legally binds the parties that agree to it. Contracts can be verbal or written, and restrictions to an individual's freedoms to make contracts have been developed in order to protect the disadvantaged. This is particularly important when you consider the role of power in all its forms in a legally binding relationship. The parties in a contract agree to be bound by the contract, and the parties are judged on what is said written or done relating to the contract and the interactions during the course of the relationship. Individuals need to enter into contracts, for example, when buying a house, a car, or when employing a new member of staff. By entering into an agreement, all parties should be convinced that if the other defaults on the agreement, then this will not affect them adversely. And if the other party does this, then the offending party will be liable. This is essentially the aim of contract law. It's a tool to ensure fair and proper behavior. The asymmetry of bargaining power means that two parties involved in a contract will have differing levels of bargaining power. There are generally provisions that will allow the law to be called upon to resolve any dispute if the stronger of the two parties is taking an unfair advantage of the other. This does not mean that you don't have to worry about terms and conditions that are unfavorable. To the contrary, you should and do need to scrutinize any agreement and ensure that a legal expert looks over the contract. There are many types of contract. Some are bespoke and some are standardized. They are very often industry specific too. Time constraints and standardization have led to a standard form contract. These are contracts that we all encounter frequently. These types of contracts are take it or leave it types of contract. They set out the terms which the organization is willing to do business. An example of this type of contract would be an internet service providers contract. The customer will have to select the contract that would be most suitable to him or her and abide by the terms and conditions of that contract. There is no negotiation in this type of contract. A specified project contract will, however, be mostly unique, although there will, of course, be standardized elements. And in instances where the organization concentrates entirely on projects, there will almost certainly be boilerplate elements to the contract. In order to be valid in the eyes of the law, the contract must have certain key elements, such as agreement. This is determined by the rules of offer and acceptance. The parties involved in the contract must have come to an agreement. Consideration. The obligations assumed by each party must be supported by the other party. Intention to create legal relations. The parties to the agreement must intend 
that their promises be legally binding. If one of these elements is missing, then the contract is not legally binding, and therefore there is no contract. But even if all these elements are present, then the contract can still be open to an issue of validity due to the following points. Form. Under most circumstances, the contract can be in any form. However, there are certain contracts that have to be in either one form or another. An example would be a contract of home ownership. This must be in written form and cannot be formed in oral form. Genuine consent. If a person has been misled, then the validity of the contract might come into question. This can also occur if the parties involved in the contract are at cross purposes caused by one of the parties being mistaken as to the exact nature of the contract. Capacity. Some persons only have limited capacity to enter into contracts. Content. A contract must be complete and precise in its terms. Legality. Courts will not enforce a contract which is deemed to be illegal or contrary to public policy. A contract involves a number of points, namely invitation, offer, acceptance, capacity, consideration, intention, and form. The invitation to treat is an indication that someone is prepared to receive offers with the view of forming a binding contract. It is important to remember that it is not an offer in itself. Let's consider a list of aspects that a contract should have in a project management scenario. The contract should state the type of contract and the parties involved in the agreement. The definitions of terms specific to the contract need to be established. Any information relating to where the contract is being carried out and what the rules and obligations are relating to what are often premises should be outlined. Approval signatories and authorities relating to the contract. Payment systems. Plans, schedules, diagrams, working drawings, etc. Detailed specifications of every aspect of the project. General conditions, including under which legal jurisdiction the contract is being formed under. Specific conditions. The change and variation system. Tender aspects relating to the project and associated works. The dispute procedure. The first course should always be some form of arbitration. Only after this has failed should formal and costly litigation be pursued. And relevant bonds relating to the project must be noted. Warranties associated with the project must be stated. The offer and acceptance process must have been adhered to. Consideration must be agreed upon. Legal capacity must have been established. Intention to create legal relations must have been established. Communication must have been decided upon. If a contract is not performed, then the path of recourse includes breach. This might result in damages being paid, frustration, rescission, rectification, void, or termination determination. Each of these points needs to be seen in the context of the project's specific scenario and the laws of the land. The contract cannot be formed without legal experts who will build the contract. This lesson is therefore simple in nature and designed to establish a base understanding of a specialism.